Hi everyone, thank you for joining me again. Here is a video to show you how to make really quick and simple men's cards. Now we all know gentlemen's cards seem to be the hardest to make. Uh, for whatever reason you can't put flowers and butterflies on most of them so hopefully these tips and tricks and quick and easy cards will inspire you to get crafting for those men in your life and you'll never be stuck for what to do for a masculine card again. So for card number one what we're going to need is a white card base, a black panel of cardstock to fit on your card base just a little bit smaller you're going to need some patterned paper. Now I would suggest this is a gingham or a tartan pattern, any color of your choice. And then some more white cardstock and I have stamped my sentiment on there ready to cut out. I've got two nesting dies. Now these are tag nesting dies that don't have the little hole in for the string. That's an optional extra with these particular dies. One is larger, one is smaller but if you don't have these sorts of dies, you could easily hand cut these shapes. And then lastly, I have some wooden buttons for the finishing touches. So what we're going to do first is do some matting and layering. Now I have already cut down to size my black cardstock to fit my white panel and then a panel of the gorgeous gingham red and white paper to just go over the top there. So I'm going to layer those together. With now regardless of how clean and simple I want my card to, do it to be, I always like to ink around the edges, either with a brown or a black usually. I am using a Distress Oxide here and it is Gathered Twigs. And this will give our card a little bit of a softer edge. Next, you need to take some more of the same type of paper and it does need to be identical. And we're going to hold this with a right angle facing down. We're going to place this diagonal going up towards the right in the top right hand corner. Bring it down about a quarter of the way and then mark with a pencil across where the top of your paper will be. So just roughly, and I like to do this just above where the line would be, I'm going to mark with a pencil. Now I'm going to trim that. And I'm going to stick this triangle down there, this time with foam tape. And I'm just placing that panel in the corner like so. Now that's starting to look like the collar of a shirt. So we want to create a pocket as well. Now that's where this paper comes back in. So using the larger of the tag dies, I'm going to cut into the paper, but I, this is going to be the bottom of the pocket and I don't need it to be as long as this. So I'm going to move my die down to around about just over halfway so that I've got a much shorter tag shape there and I'm going to take that down. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine and once again I'm going to go around the edge. Again just lightly, you don't need too much ink. That really helps that pocket to stand out. I'm not going to glue that down just yet but I'm going to come to my cardstock that's got my sentiment stamped on it and to the smaller tag die. So just checking that my sentiment will fit in the point of this tag. So we've kind of got the tag so that the hole would be at the top there. And we're just going to tape this down with a little low tack tape. And run that through our die cutting machine. Now this white tag is going to act as a handkerchief just peeking out of the top of the pocket, but of course we need to cut that tag down. So position it with your gingham pocket or your tartan or whatever fabric you've chosen. You could even go with a denim printed paper if you wanted to. And just position that so that you cut it to the right size. Now I'm going to bring that down a little bit and work out my positioning. So I'm going to glue my pocket down with a wet glue onto my card and I'm going to just add glue to the bottom portion 
Again, just using my pocket to make sure that's lined up. There we go. And the reason I popped the glue just on the bottom is so that I can lift and roll and add a little bit of shape to this because it would be a soft fabric and it might just flop a little at the top. So I've just done that to add some dimension. And now I'm going to put foam tape on the back of the pocket. And the finishing touch, of course, is some buttons. Now I've chosen wooden buttons because it goes with the gingham type fabric that I've got, but you can choose any buttons that you've got at home. And I'm going to use a hot glue to place these down. If you've got time, putting some thread through the centers of these first would look really cool. But if you don't, that's fine. I'm just going to put one button at the bottom of the collar, one at the top of the pocket, and then I'm going to run buttons down the right hand side. And there's our first finished card for men. So here's card number two. Now what you're going to need for this one is a card base, a piece of watercolour cardstock or paper that's exactly the same size as the front of your card base. You're going to need some water-based inks. I'm using Distress Oxides in Gathered Twigs and Prize Ribbon. A little bit of water spray. You're going to need a black die cut or um, a silhouette of a shape that represents the gentleman. So it could be something like a tennis racket, a guitar, um, a pitcher of beer, whatever it may be, something that they like. You're also going to need a piece of either clear packaging or a piece of acetate, and it needs to be cut so it's a reasonably thin strip, probably not, mu not much thicker than about three or four inches wide. You're going to need a blending mat, ideally a heat tool just to speed things along a bit, and I have already pre-stamped my sentiment, so you'll need to decide on your sentiment as well. Now first onto my blending mat or my resistant surface, it could be something like a glass mat. I'm going to smooch a little bit of ink of each of the two colours and I'm going to spritz both of them with water. So the water reacts with the ink and makes it into a bit like a watercolour paint. Now I'm just going to put that to the top there, so hopefully you can see it. And this is my watercolour paper with my sentiment already stamped on. Now to stamp that, I have used inks that won't react with water if they do touch the water, so they will stay nice and clean. And I'm going to take my either, either acetate or plastic packaging, thin plastic packaging here or wrapping, and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the ink there. I don't want too much so I'm going to dab it off a little bit and I'm going to start just pressing that down where I want it and this is why we use a piece of packaging and keep it quite small because this way we can really pick it up and place it where we want it. It's not too much of a guessing game. So there's quite a bit of blue down there and I don't want to mix my two colours too much, so I'm going to clean up my piece of packaging. That's quite a mouthful, that is piece of packaging. Wiping it there. I'm going to allow this to dry, and then I'm going to do the same with the brown colour. Now both colours are dry and you can see we've got them perfectly placed where we want the colour. We can now add our silhouette, so this is a guitar, it's got a little bit, if I just catch the light, you can see it's got a little bit of embossing in it. Uh, this guitar has come from a die set from the brand Paper Discovery. And I'm going to add a bit of black foam tape onto the back of there and just place this near the sentiment. And now that whole panel can be glued onto the front of the card base there to finish off card number two. Now for card number three. What you're going to need for this one is a craft cardstock base of any size you wish. You're going to need some 
pale color cardstock. Now I've used a watercolor, so it's not bright white, it's a slight ivory color. I've got some contrasting colors here, three of them. I've got a lovely petrol blue, a bright orange, and a deep black, and that's all cardstock, but you don't need too much of that, so you can use your scraps. I've got the sentiment that I want to use. Now this one is from Sizzix and it's You Can Do This. This particular sentiment isn't necessarily for a birthday, of course, it's more for um, sending someone um, good wishes or telling, telling someone that you're thinking of them. And of course we need to do masculine cards for that sometimes as well. And I've carefully chosen a frame die that will fit around my stamp. Now this can be any shape you like, but ideally with some a, at least one, straight edge. So I'm going to stamp this onto my watercolour card stock in a nice deep black and then I'm going to die cut that out. So now I've got my stamped sentiment cut out and I've left the black so it's not absolutely perfect so it's a little bit grungy rather than keep re-stamping it to try and get a perfect impression because I like that look. I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut myself some strips of these colours around about a centimetre or so wide. So I just need one good size strip of each colour. And then I'm going to cut a couple of each of the colours into about inch long pieces, very roughly. Now with these I'm going to snip one of each of the colours with a diagonal point, just like so. And I'm just doing this by hand so it doesn't have to be perfect and you can chop and change which direction the diagonals go in. And then with the other three I'm going to just snip them into flag ends so that's with this sort of fishtail banner style end there. So I do this by snipping a line down the middle and then going from each corner to the top of that line. So I've divided my banners now, so I've taken two away and I'm going to put them elsewhere on the card and the remaining four I'm going to fit along here. So you can change the amount of flags or banners that you have depending on of course the size of your stamp and your die cut. Um, this is just a rough guide for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a line of glue along the uh, left hand edge but the back of the stamped piece and I'm going to position my flag ends and just hover that over until I'm happy and pick those up. There we go. So once I'm happy with those and press them into place. There we go. Now you can play with these so I, while the glue is wet I'm just going to move them a little bit. Some can be longer than others of course. And once you're happy with everything turn this over and put foam tape across the back. So this panel with your banners on the back is going to go in the top right hand corner and just down the bottom here we're going to place the other two banners but just much shorter. We can turn these over and just snip off the excess. And there's another very quick clean and simple card for gentlemen. Card number four. Now this one can have many different varieties. So it really depends on the shape of the nesting dies that you use. I'm going to be using here some um, octagons and it depends on the colour of the card stocks but I would definitely, uh, for a masculine card, usually go for uh, neutral colours, maybe some metal effects in there as well. So I've chosen to go for a black card stock 
a silver high gloss mirror, a uh, sort of like a chalk effect paper, and then I've got this like brushed steel looking embossed paper as well. I've then got a square card base. So the first thing we're going to do is take our nesting dies. Now I've got a few here, so I've got five in total, and they're ranging from about two inches wide to around about four inches wide, so or maybe even a little bit bigger than that. I'm going to pop them all upside down and lay them so that they are all lined up perfectly as if they were nested together, and make sure that the gaps between them are all perfectly even. Once I'm happy with those, I'm going to take some low tack tape and I'm going to place it over all of the dies to hold them together. And I'm going to do this in a couple of directions. There. Now what you want to do is cut through all four of your coloured papers and cardstocks using this one die set here, all together at the same time. Because they're fairly simple designs, they should cut out quite nicely. Now these dies are great because they've actually got a stitch detail around the edge, so that will add a little bit of extra interest. So once you have all your pieces cut out, you want to start picking and arranging some of them. So I'm going to choose a really large cork octagon there and I'm going to place that there and then maybe bring a smaller one up into this top corner. I'm going to take a medium sized one of the silver and overlap it a little bit on this edge. And just keep working like this until you're happy with your placement of everything. Once you're starting to get there with the placement, you can start gluing things down because otherwise it's going to get a little bit confusing. Now what I'm making sure of is that I'm leaving a space uh, potentially for a sentiment here somewhere. So I think my sentiment is going to go here. So I'm just going to have one more shape, which is probably going to be this one, just maybe about here. But I'm going to glue these down, trim the edges, and then see what I think of the placement. And then if you need to add any additional pieces in, you've got all of these spare pieces that you've just cut away that you can start placing back in again. So I think I'm going to add a few more. And you'll see that you've actually still got plenty of shapes from your die cutting left to use. So you can actually do two or three of these cards at once if you want to be time saving. So now what I need to do is find a sentiment that's going to fit in there. Now you can of course choose your sentiment first and then work your shapes around that. Now I love that like that, but I'm going to use an ink spray just to flick a little bit of black ink around that sentiment, just to fill in the gaps at the top here. So just with my finger tapping on the end of the nozzle there. So I've taken the whole of the ink tube out and around the bottom as well, holding it quite close to the card so that I know this is going to go where I want it to. There we go. So a superstar as a sentiment, and we've got all of those fantastic hexagons there. So that is our fourth card. Card number five is really simple. It may take a little bit longer than the previous cards. So I've got a craft card base, and I've just used a pencil to sketch the initial of the recipient on in a nice bold capital letter. Now I'm going to cut this out with a craft knife, so this may take a little while. So let's just speed through this bit. Now of course this isn't going to work with every letter of the alphabet. 
Um, if you have letters that have a uh, full circle in them, you may want to think about leaving a little gap so that the middle piece doesn't fall out. So once I've cut out the inside of my letter just through the front of the card base, I'm going to ink around the edges with a brown Distress Oxide. So this is just going to help those edges look a little bit neater and almost as if uh, something's been burnt into the cardstock. You'll see it just picks out those edges a bit better. So next I'm going to take a black die cut. Now these are cogs and gears. I've got a full panel here from my textures range from the Steampunk collection. But if you have individual cog and gear dies, you can use those as well. So using quite a sturdy black cardstock here, I've cut, die cut the panel and I'm just going to place them behind that S there. So just gluing in place with the fine tip nozzle of the applicator um, right behind the S. Trimming away the excess and then I'm going to just snip small elements from that excess and fit in any gaps where I need them. So there's all five of our cards for gentlemen that took absolutely no time at all. So if you are in a hurry and you need to whip up a card quickly, you can follow one of these tutorials. Of course, you can change the colorways, uh, the patterns of the paper, uh, and even the sentiments, of course, on any one of these to suit the recipient. So have fun with this. And like I said at the beginning, if you do like this video, please do hit that subscribe button. I'll definitely be doing a Cards for Men part two very soon.